Hi, this is Asim. This is Sujoy. This is Amrita. And you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast about the three main Khans of the Hindi film industry. Amir, Salman, and Shara. Hi, you're listening to Khandan, a Bollywood podcast regular feed. Thank you so much for your support over the years. We now have a Patreon channel with bonus content and exclusive merch for those of you who would like to support us. Every dollar goes towards creating more and better content. Visit us at patreon.com slash Khandan podcast. Hi and welcome to a new episode of Khandan podcast. My name is Asim Burney and I'm joined with Just Amrita. Hey, Just Amrita. <laughs> Hi, Asim. <laughs> Sujoy is still traveling the world. Check out his Instagram for amazing pictures. I think he's in Korea at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. He's on the train to Busan. He's poor guy is so tired and I'm sending him itne sade mein jokes like it's like <laughs> I'm finding the worst that I can send him and he's just like too tired to even react on it. <laughs> just, I'm enjoying it so much. <laughs> uh but yeah this is like Sujoy's so just having like simultaneously the time of his life but also like the worst time ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very joy thing to happen yeah si- simultaneously yeah. Uh, but yeah i think we'll he- hear all about it when he's back uh, which is in a couple of weeks so we're holding for together at the moment we watched a few things that we want to talk about but i think our main review is going to be hira mandi uh, the show that dropped on netflix um and actually i had a tiktok live yesterday uh, harun harun rashid our friend hosted us and uh, i joined and it was really cool and i want to thank 4000 people that joined us which is insane you know Woo! like uh, you know when you have a when you have the biggest uh, bollywood dj radio host uh, doing the tiktok obviously so many people show up so that was really cool uh, and tiktok gave me a dollar which was also cool i'll take like a dollar <laughs> i didn't know this happened paisa fake uh, tamasha de exactly <laughs> yeah. i'm a dancing monkey for money man speaking <laughs> of which <laughs> sign up to patreon for $1 Yeah, uh, if you want, give us a dollar on TikTok. Give us a dollar on Patreon, please. Yeah, yeah. we're actually just discussing um, what we will be discuss. Uh, we will be reviewing next time, and I think one of our listeners, Turtle Pirate, had a good one. So I think that might be the one that we choose. Um, but also, I think maybe we should do a hangout. It's been a while, and the last one didn't go well because yeah. we messed up the thing, uh, uh, the hour, uh, the time zones. So maybe we should announce something. So if you want to hang out with us. going to be on patreon you can join from $1 so um a few things that we watched or uh, amrita you didn't watch uh, or you avoided watching i watched absolutely not yeah no <laughs> i watched amir khan on the kapil sharma show um, i mean i saw the clips and i was immediately like there was some things when he was talking about his work I was like okay like that was interesting and like Amit truly does have uh, a perspective about what it means to be a filmmaker in Bollywood right so that yeah. was like interesting but the moment he started telling quote unquote charming stories <laughs> I was out I was 100% out but uh, <laughs> you are number one fan of yeah. the Amir fan club so how is it for you See the thing is for me I've never seen a Kapil Sharma show that was my new thing like I'd never seen it I didn't know what the format was I don't even know these people so you sent me a clip and uh-huh. I was like why are people laughing like a loon when it's just like a story he's telling I didn't understand that it was like this is the format of the show like everything is funny even when it's not funny because like there's the lady Archana Puran Singh she she's sitting behind a desk which I don't understand why she's in a in front at a desk like and then Kapil Sharma is actually listening quite sincerely to Amir but Archana Puran Singh is laughing like it's he's telling like you know jokes and it's not it's just a story that he's telling so i i had some trouble with the format and then also like these comedians come in and then the, he's telling like a very heartfelt story about you know how he picks up on emotions and uh, how he was telling the story about how uh, uh, his wife his first wife Reena was uh, uh delivering a baby and uh she was in so much pain that he kind of picked up an acting note 
uh, while she was in pain. And then she slapped him. was like, why are you thinking of acting when I'm, you know, can you not be present? But that's just the way his brain works, right? Um, and it was a good, like, that's the thing. Like, he has insights in these moments, which I don't think any other actor necessarily does. Like, I don't see Akshay, Salman, or even Shah Rukh doing it this way. Like, you know, he's like in that space. He's like, half of his brain is always about filmmaking. And that's just the kind of guy he is. And he also t- tells the story about why he, he's he been tagged a uh, perfectionist and where that came from. And that was actually from Shabana Azmi, which was a really cool story too. Um, so a lot of cool stories. And this is all part of um, Amir's mea culpa tour, right? Like uh, he had two flops and now he needs to go to these comedy shows and kind of tell people that he's a human that can interact with the common people again. Um, but I don't know. I didn't know all of these stories get intercut with these terrible sketches that again, everybody's laughing about. And I'm like, what is going on? Clearly, I mean, I'm not enjoying it. Amir is not enjoying it. Only apparently Archana Puran Singh is really enjoying it. So, but again, this is like a format I don't understand. But I don't, this is not an Indian thing necessarily. These format exist in, I've seen them in Italian TV. I've seen them on French TV. I've seen them on British TV. And it's just not a format that works for me, this kind of forced laughter thing. Um, so but just, I really, hmm? just FYI, uh, that show's been cancelled, by the way. <laughs> Which show? <laughs> Kapil Sharma on Netflix. Is it? Yeah, it got cancelled. <laughs> After Amir? Yes. Wow, okay. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> their ratings were in the in the toilet. So apparently... That's one more. Uh, that's one more victim to like the Amir you know, skin <laughs> form. <laughs> when nothing is going right, nothing really is going right. Wow! Because so, they have like eight more episodes coming up. They have like Bobby Deval is dropping. There's a few others, and they just cancelled it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Netflix India, man. They really can't figure their shit out, can they? Like, I don't know. Like, no. They spent a lot of money. Clearly, they spent a lot of money I on mean, these people. I mean, we're going to talk about it when we yeah. talk about Hira Mandi because yeah. I have so many thoughts. Yeah. So, I mean, the I, I thought the Amir is great in it. He's, his stories are amazing. Uh, I liked him a lot uh, on it. And I think it's a good show. I just... Uh, it's a good sec, uh, in, uh, interview. I just think... I, I skipped through the comedy parts, basically, or when um, Amir's dancing and stuff, stuff that he's clearly not interested or good at, you know, like interacting like a human being. Um, so, but I think he's very aware of his, uh, he's very vul- vulnerable also. Like he literally almost cried twice in the show talking about how his movies haven't done well and how he was depressed and the couple Sharma show made him feel better watch and this is a lie this is a hundred percent lie there's no way Amir was watching and maybe he was depressed because he was watching the Kapil Sharma show that's maybe the reason but there was there were there were quite a few moments of like vulnerability from him and I thought that was really cool and I think I hope it works I I, clearly he's not he doesn't want to do this it's a strategy so I hope at least paid out you know like he got a bit more goodwill because I think he's had a, a rough go around for the last few years you don't have anything to add on the rough go around because you're part of the rough go around. Uh, I'm his uh, official troll number one. <laughs> um, no, like you know, you know, like what my opinion is about Amir. Like, uh, mm. as long as he's making movies, I can like you know, I'm like, okay, this is great. This is you know, like my kind of stuff, or maybe it's not my kind of stuff, but I appreciate the thought. Um, and the moment he starts like philosophizing on top of it, I'm just like, no, thank you. Like <laughs> Bollywood Jesus can get the f- out. Like I don't care. But uh, I have to say, like, I feel a lot of these f- clips are floating now because that's what the internet does. It just c- cuts mm-hmm. a clip, and mm-hmm. and I think those a lot of times, like we know this, but these clips are kind of unfair. The way the story is context, told, yeah, yeah, like. Like the, the like you sent me the one where he's like talking about Punjab, right? Like he mm-hmm. was, you know, he, the way the clips showed uh, shows it is like you know Amir is in Punjab and he's basically you know Alia Bhatt in Gangu by the ending where he's like you know <laughs> everybody's like for now, but the entire story is actually quite nice and slightly Islamophobic, but st- still it's it's a nice story. Um, 
but when you clip it it just he does seem come off to be very douchey which uh, is unfortunate but i guess that's just the internet for you right um yeah uh watch it like i watched it i think if you are an amir number 1 fan like me and just forward to the shitty uh, comedy bits which don't work for me if they work for you great you know if they work for amir and oppression great you know um yeah i uh you also watched the movie right Yes, I finally made it out to the theaters to watch Arisha mm. with Fat Fasel and uh, a bunch of like newcomers that they recruited from the from Instagram, I think. Like they're oh, wow. influencers and there's like, you know, these three kids and it was it was hilarious uh and it was also Fafa is like such an amazing actor. Like I like I enjoy watching him on screen so much. Um and this particular character has like in a, in a in the hands of a lesser actor I think it would have been like a very one note performance. Mm. But here like you know you feel bad for him. You like you're rooting for him. Uh there's the scene where like he does like this really cool thing and you're just like wow like you know you're like absolutely thrilled that he's doing all of it i'm not giving spoilers because i want you to watch it when it comes out on streaming or whatever because i don't think it's playing in your network no it's not it's, yeah. yeah um and the kids are really great and it's it's funny because i i was telling uh the friend that i went to watch it with that this makes it 3 for 3 that i've seen in from malayalam cinema over the past couple of months with like manumel boys rdg with them and then avation it's about it's a story of like men being idiots you know and like the consequences of them it's being idiots it's a documentary idiots. is it a documentary <laughs> <laughs> it actually you know what that the manumel boys actually is based on like a real life incident like that actually happened yeah rdg with them is also based on a real life incident that really happened and avesham is not based on a real life incident but honestly like the entire time i was like both my friend and i were like we know these guys like you know like literally like we went to school with these guys like we know who they are so it might as well have been based on on real life so it's just um yeah but it's like the the whole time that the boys were making like one bad decision after another <laughs> like you knew that they were being idiots but not in a way that makes you like feel unsympathetic towards them you know this is our like, whole technique of guys this is what we aim for <laughs> being <laughs> idiots but still you feel bad for us <laughs> uh that's that's what the the kids in avation do really well you know um and it's it was re- and the only thing was like there were no there was like there was like one female character well two but it was really like 1.5 um and as we were walking out my friend was just like what they couldn't find like even one woman to put in there and i guess not uh but it was yeah uh, it was it was a fun journey and i think uh, you will like it nice I'm waiting for it. I I think only uh, Manjumal Boys just dropped on um, uh, Hotstar. I think, mm-hmm. um, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. But I remember you said that it was it was a fun watch. I don't know why Avisham didn't show here, or maybe just not in my area. But uh, there there is a movie with um, uh, there is one that came out. I think, but all actors I don't know. So. Uh, Uh, there was a Tovino Thomas movie also that came out, but I, again, it's they just keep coming out, and I don't hear any buzz from them. So I don't know if the new one is good or not. Mm-hmm. But I just tend to watch them when they come out on streaming. So yeah, uh, yeah. But there's a lot that has dropped on streaming. You know, really high quality stuff. You know, there's Twelve Fail that dropped. There's Lapata Ladies that dropped. I chose to watch Crack. Uh, <laughs> a classic an instant <laughs> classic jitega to jiega i need to say the title as a whole by the way, i got to say i i st- i i saw on nora fateh page that the movie had dropped on streaming uh-huh. so i go to the search bar i do crack c r a c k didn't find it <laughs> then i got cracked c r a c t didn't find it i was like what what is this movie even called 
I said, crack with two Ks. So I was like, ah, finally, fuck. cracked it. <laughs> cracked it. <laughs> oh, Just God. so that, uh, you know, in case people have forgotten, uh, this is the movie for which to do promotions. Uh, Vidyut Jamal went into the Himalaya, stripped naked <laughs> and slouched like <laughs> bare ass on the side of some stream and was like, this is where I come to meditate or something like that. <laughs> and yeah. then I'm just like, what? But anyway, was it worth the, you know, the the leeches in uncomfortable places? So this is one of those movies that you, literally it's so bad, it's good kind of thing, right? Like this is the kind of movies you have to watch with your friends, get drunk, take shots, whatever you want to do, take whatever and just have a good time. I was watching it on my own. So I, I don't have any friends, but I still have a good time because I was really excited for this kind of bonkers insanity that this movie provides. This is not a good movie. Uh, on my letterbox, I gave it like two stars. It's not a good movie, but I did enjoy the insanity of it, right? Um, also, speaking of going naked, uh, uh, Vidyu Jamal produced this movie himself. So I do respect that. Like he, he had a vision and he's putting his own money behind it. And I can kind of respect what he was trying to do. But Man, this movie is hilarious, man. Like it's it's so it's so bad. It's good kind of thing. Let, let me f- give you a few. Do you know anything about the movie? First of all, I imagine. I not. know. No, I know that Nora's in it, and he has a mullet. Nora is really good. I'm enjoying Nora's strategy of becoming an actress because uh, I've heard good things about her in Mad- Madgao Express, right? Uh, here yeah. she does. She's actually probably the best out of all of like the actors and. Basically, she knew nobody's going to see this movie, right? So it's a great training ground for her to kind of, you know, become like a proper actress, which she clearly wants to do. And I think she's actually quite good in this movie. So, uh, but also they don't make her do the things that she's actually good at, like dancing on a good song. Then They don't have the budget for that. But she is actually acting and she's actually quite good in it. So this movie is like, um, is very much inspired from Gully Boy. Uh, but it also meets uh, mixes it with uh, Khatron Ka Khiladi and like, uh, you know that Korean show I like, Physical 100, which is like mm-hmm. an extreme sport kind of thing. Um, but the funny part is, is it's like, it's uh, Vidyut Jamwa <laughs> playing like a Mumbai gully boy. So, but the dude is like 44 years old and there's something just hilarious about a 44-year-old doing parkour because you could do parkour over the own over the wrinkles on your own face, you know. It's just something very like, hilarious about that. Asim um, Bernie, you are a hater. <laughs> you are part of the movie mafia, the Nepo gang. I'm just happy because I'm 45 and I'm literally wrinkle-free here. You know, like I'm not cracked, you know. So I'm enjoying it. But like the man is just like a physical specimen. Like the things he does is like insane. Like how can he do that? I don't understand. Like, and he's just so far above anybody else, like in terms of like physicality, it's just not even an equal race. Like, like there's a lot of moments where there's CGI enhancement in the action scenes, but you're like, you don't know because it's with your Jamal and he could literally be doing these things, right? Like there's a scene where he's like running over a train and he does like, he hangs like that, like horizontal on the door frame of the train while the train is riding. And knowing Vidyut Jamwal's skills, I don't know if he did, he probably did that. Like, it's insane. Like, who does that? Vidyut Jamwal does, you know? Um, so that is crazy. But the writing of this movie is just all over the place. Uh, it's filled with a bunch of cool people. And you know these are cool people because they're constantly high-fiving each other. <laughs> high-five left and right. They, they wake up, they high-five, they go, they high-five, you know? Uh, they call each other sissies when they don't know, you know? Look at the sissy. That's that's what cool people say, you know. When you're when you're scared, <laughs> look at the sissy. And then when uh, when Vidyut Jamwal is doing something crazy, you know, like uh, insane, one of the guys will say he just cracks. School because cool people do that kind of thing, right? That's how cool people talk. Um, <laughs> uh, and this game is a global phenomenon. Phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon. Everybody's tuning in on their phone. Everybody's watching it. You know, like things go viral in the world in, in Bollywood. Like, you know, when 
Sultan was break dancing on Jag Ghumeya and everybody was just watching it on the phone as like, yeah, this is going viral. That kind of viral. Um, and the rules of this game are insane. They don't make any, they're like the ramblings of a madman. It's like, have you seen Parks and Recreation? Yeah. You know that game he invents, Ben, the cones of Dunshire? <laughs> That's how the rules of this game are. They're like, insane. It's like, <laughs> it's like true American in New Girl. They make no sense, you know, that kind of level. Um, and th- the game master is Arjun Rampal. <laughs> so he is the game master. This is a game that is watched by the entire global world. So there's a lot of eyeballs on him, right? So he also has a side hustle of nuclear arms, you know, <laughs> something that you need to be very covert and secretive about. He has like a side hustle where he's selling like very fluorescent plutonium to everybody. <laughs> Insane. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's this one sequence. <laughs> I have to say this. <laughs> so again, I'm telling you, everybody watches the show, right? Like everybody's on the phone. This has been going on for a long time and stuff like that. <laughs> the idea is it's called Maidan. So everybody's talking about Maidan in English and stuff like that. So uh, Vidyut Jamal had an older brother. And imagine if Vidyut is already 44, how older this other brother used to be. So anyway, he is the first that gets picked to Maidan and go there, but he dies uh, in Maidan and they send a bag of money, which nobody wants to touch because insanity. It's no, It makes no sense. They're poor, but they don't want to touch a bag of money for some reason. Um, but Vidyut is like, who killed my brother and how did he die? <laughs> he doesn't know. Although this game has been watched by everybody on everybody's phone. So after the interval, <laughs> Vidyut Jamal gets a video sent of how his brother died. <laughs> how he dies. <laughs> is He jumps off a plane and the idea is they jump off a plane and they throw a motorbike first. And then they have to catch the motorbike and then let go of their <laughs> parachute. <laughs> so the parachute of the brother doesn't work because it's been sabotaged by Arjun Rampal. <laughs> and the screen is like just a scooter <laughs> flying to the Burj Khalifa and exploding <laughs> and with you this like no <laughs> and it is the most hilarious thing i've ever seen like imagine you not knowing how your brother died <laughs> and it's because he <laughs> fell into the yeah. Khalifa with the motorcycle a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> because his parachute didn't open oh my god uh, <laughs> i i got i mean yeah you know what that is that's crack that is he is crack. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah, it's 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 amazing. They shot this movie in Poland. So <laughs> they have a lot of Polish henchmen. <laughs> and Polish people, they're not the most tanned people in the world. They're quite uh-huh. pale. Uh-huh. And they clearly ran out of money. So they only have like two henchmen that are like hench. Uh-huh. They have muscles. And all the rest are like out of shape Polish people. <laughs> And the thing is, in Poland, they make them wear like only a bulletproof vest. <laughs> That's it. They're only wearing no shirt, bulletproof vest and like a skinny jeans, a black jeans. And they've got like all of these love handles coming out and like pale skin and no muscles, like just flabby arms. Why? I don't know. I think they just ran out of bu- budget and they had to get like builders and lorry drivers to be henchmen or something like that, you know? At least they could have just let them wear their own shirt. Yeah, not even not even a shirt in Polish weather, man. It's it's crazy. It's this movie, man. It's like it's such a good time. I mean, I, I, like I, I mean, I, I I don't think the level of marketing I'm doing with this movie is as much as with you Jamal being naked. You know, this is this <laughs> like. You have to go watch this movie. <laughs> Cracked. Uh, Asim has not been able to say the full title with a straight face, like, in, like, ever. <laughs> He's been cracking up even when typing. Cracked. It's so funny. <laughs> Jeetega to jiega. <laughs> so funny. Oh, I hope they make a sequel, man. Really <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yeah, so that was Cracked. That's it. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. Shall we move on to our uh, main review? Yes. Are you ready for this? 
Um, why don't you tell me first, like, you know, what you were discussing on uh, TikTok about this with Haroon? I think we need to. So we're talking about Hira Mandi. Yes. And I think we need to get into the zone of it, right? So, Mohtarma Amrita is this method of guftugu ka aagaz kare ji huzur oh god uh, i actually had like a mumbai dialogue written down for the crack part 2 but i couldn't uh-huh. go through it as i can't i would be able to do it so anyway this is my urdu here um yes uh so so your question was what we, what did we discuss about on the tiktok uh, yeah. we uh, i mean we we had a um, It's funny because both me and Harun got screener sent, right? So yeah. we had a chance to watch this uh, whole season a week before um, the the episode went live, and it's an interesting situation because although you get to see something first, you are also watching it in a bubble. And I had certain thoughts uh, about the show, and Harun had certain thoughts. And then when it goes live, and you hit like. twitter discussions you're like oh wow like okay like i clearly did not feel as okay there's certain points that i was like okay this doesn't work that doesn't work but the furiosity of twitter about certain aspect really took us uh, um we didn't expect it at all um it kind of blindsided us so we were discussing a bit a bit of that uh and then we talked a lot about uh, i think one of the main criticisms has been about uh Sharmin Segal's um portrayal of Alam Zeb and the criticism about that uh we talked about Sanjali Eleven Sali as a whole how do, does that work for you how does that doesn't work for you and i mean if people haven't checked us out we were on our friend Manish Mathur's um episode of it pot to be you from talk film society we did a srk draft and my feelings about slb were uh, illustrated very forcefully on that episode um so we talked about that we had a f- bunch of other uh, content creators come on so it was a really nice conversation of an hour that we had um but i also wanted to delve in with it with you because i do feel i feel having watched it a week before already it'd been marinating in my mind and then so much discussion then i had another i had a call with haroon before while we were talking while we were watching the show because he was literally the only person i could talk to about it um because both of us had signed the embargo and then we had the one hour tiktok live so in a way i feel there's been a lot of discussion already and i'm a bit spent so i'm kind of looking forward to your thoughts because i actually don't know um i was sending you just reactions of i'm really enjoying the show um the show is fire and then even i was taking notes and then literally the further the show progressed I st- stopped sending you <laughs> reactions on the show. <laughs> It just got really silent to us. Got really the end. quiet. <laughs> so yeah, what did what did you think of Hira Mandi? Um I thought so the when the the series begins with like a close up shot of a woman's ghagra, right? You can see the fabric and that's how the the whole thing begins. And I think you couldn't have a better example of what slb thinks is filmmaking because <laughs> it's just aesthetics you know uh and it's not even aesthetics that fit the period it's just aesthetics that appeal to him mm. he likes those sort of gauzy dupattas he likes those deep cut sabyasachi blouses he likes those uh, that the dozy work it's very the you know the the giant ceilings the the women running through hallways the chandeliers it's all very slb but there is no heart in this in the series like there are isolated performances that i thought were great uh sanjeeva shekh was great uh sonakshi sinha was great rita chadda was great but there was nothing in there that made me think that oh my god like this is an amazing story that i'm obsessed with any of these characters you know like even the good performances i didn't particularly care for those characters i thought uh, i thought like so the first couple of episodes that i saw that's the one where you have sonakshi's um, older character uh, in flashbacks right rehana yeah 
And Rehana's a fucking bitch, but <laughs> she is so interesting. You know, she's like a proper villain. Yeah. And then she just goes out with a whimper. And then, you know, like the the Faridhan who comes, you know, the second Sunakshi that comes, she's not really a villain in the way that Rehana was, you yeah. know? Faridhan is basically having a revenge arc, which is very different from having a villain arc. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like I genuinely, I couldn't find a single character that I really cared about. And also I thought social media was having its usual hissy fit about Nepo casting when they went to town about Sharmin Segal. But they were right. <laughs> <laughs> In this particular instance, I mean, that is like, like her her face doesn't move. And mm. also her Urdu is shit. You know, like there is this uh there's a spot where like uh I, I think at the in the in the last episode I think where she meets like Farida Jalal and Farida Jalal is like really uh you know like really sick and she she has to say something like up uh se parez kyun kar rahi hai, or like something like that, you know. And the way she says it is like the worst diction that I have ever heard in my life. And it's especially noticeable because it's right next to Farida Jalal, who is so good. You know, she's just absolutely on point. And then you have like Shamin Saigal, who can't even say like, like forget like getting the Urdu right or the accent right. She can't even say it like normally, <laughs> you know, like. Why aren't you eating your medicines? Like, that's all she needs to say. Like, but she can't get that emotion out. It's yeah. just terrible. And the the way this entire story is structured, Alam Zeb is the heart of the story, right? Like, if you don't care about her and Tajdar, then, you know, like, Tajdar, sorry. Uh, and you really don't get what the story is if you don't love these two and if you don't root for them but i didn't root for either one of them you know like can i was just like can i just say like about that like i don't think sanjali la mansali can write a love story like i don't think he's capable of doing it like i i've not see, like literally the best one like it's always immediate falling in love like that's mm-hmm. every time it's it's the same thing and the best version of that was the chandelier dropping in Hamdil Le Chuke Sanam. That mm-hmm. was the best version of what he wanted to say. And it's he's never been able to repeat it. And it doesn't work for me. He do, does the same thing with all of his Deepika Ranveer movies. And he's doing the same thing here. And I did not I did not root for this love story whatsoever because I don't understand why I should be rooting for these people. Um I don't I didn't necessarily like Tajdar that much either. Um and like he he doesn't care. Sanjay Lila Bansari does not care to make the us love these people. He loves mm. these visuals. He doesn't care for the characters because he cannot convey that love. I don't know why, why he's like a weird AI art robot or something like that. Like he cannot, you know, c- create human connections. And I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, uh, somebody shifted from normal human emotions. It's very pretty. But there's no heart, there's no emotion. And I think that fails all of these actresses across the board. And I think that's also why Twitter was so up in arms about it. I mean, there's like another aspect to it as well, which I'll come to in a bit. But what happens is that when you have a, uh, like SLB's sense of filmmaking is very much taken from like Bollywood, right? So there's Pakiza and Mughalayazam and like, you know, those yeah. those big, grand but, spectacles. Yeah, but also this idea of having the same actor play the son or the daughter or, you know, that kind of thing. Or like, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. that's also a very Hindi film trope, which I fear yeah. if you're an outsider, you don't even understand what they did with Sunakshi's character or with Shekhar Suman's character, right? When mm-hmm. they're actual, you know, he's playing the young version and then he becomes the son. And if you're an outsider, you're like, what's going on here? You know, like, that's a Hindi film trope. But uh, what happens is that when you look at something like Mughalayazam or Pakiza, um, 
that is complete. I don't know if you watched either one of those movies, Asim, but they're completely emotion based. Mm-hmm. Like everything is like very heightened emotion, right? Yeah. Um, when Madhubala says to uh, to Prithvi Raj Kapoor that you know, uh, ye kaniz apko apna khun maaf karti hai. Like it is like it is like a very like over the top dialogue. But in that moment, you are just like, oh shit, like burn, you know, like you really feel the impact of it. Yeah. Um. When in Pakiza, you know, like, you know, like. Raj Kumar says to Meena Kumari that you know, like, "Aapke pair baat khub surat hai, unhe zameen par mat uh, mat rakhiye," like whatever. You really feel it. You're just like, "Oh my god!" Like that is the most romantic thing that I've ever heard. And Bansali just can't do that. I think the closest that we got was like probably <coughs> Madhuri and Sharukh and Devdas, where you know, like, uh, you know, like you can feel the yearning that. Chandramukhi has for Devdas when, like you know, uh, Madhuri and Sharukh are sort of playing off each other, but that's about as close as he's come, and that is entirely because of Madhuri and Sharukh. It's not because of Vinsali. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So when your um, when your inspirations are so well known, and you basically are trying to recreate the aesthetics on film. then people also automatically expect the emotions to come with it and then all of a sudden the emotions aren't there and they get really upset and i think yeah. that's why like twitter was so uh vicious when uh when this one came out you know and and i think also it's that i this is theory i have why i never connected with the ranveer deepika movies with slb that much because he treats his actors like a prop and i think mm. uh, there's no push back deepika and ranveer will not push back to sanjay leela mansali i think even ranveer kapoor back in the day pushed back too much and that's why he hasn't been casted again um but salman ashwarya sharukh uh, madhuri these people know what they want and slb was in a different stage and they push back they were like no i'm not doing this this is the way i want to do it. and that actually added to their personality to their performances deepika and ranveer are great actors sharmin segal segal is not you know right so if she it's her mamu directing it and he's only interested in visuals it hurts her because she doesn't have the capability or even the charisma or even the connection with the audience to give us anything more than what slb is directing her to do uh and i think that's where the mistake lies he he's just not yeah do you feel and this is another theory of of mine is that he just takes on too much like i think he, he if he's writing and directing and composing and doing set design and doing the music and doing the choreography that that's why everything kind of feels uh you know kind of mid because he's not focusing on two three things like especially the music like that's a big thing for me like i didn't like any of the songs in serdi i won't be singing them in 6 months time you know um i was this is- yeah and i i was actually super disappointed in the music uh yeah. especially because like uh the aaj sakal bana yeah. is like one of my favorite uh, sufi hymns but this was probably the most mid version of it that i've yeah. actually heard you know like it's yeah. terrible yeah and then there's also uh, you know like <laughs> it was just really funny to uh, to go on twitter and see all the pakistanis who were watching this because <laughs> they were like why are they in lahore and like all like talking like lucknowi urdu like what is happening here you know yeah um yeah. and i like i like somebody wrote into me and they were just like you know they kind of uh, this indian person like wrote into me and they uh, cuz i uh, i quote i retweeted like one of the pakistani uh, twitter threads where they basically had it's like a really interesting thread actually where they had actual archival photos the of, first tweet does that whole thread such a disservice because it, yeah. the tone the framing of that the rest is so interesting but the framing of that tweet is so uh you know uh, antagonistic that mm-hmm. you like immediately you know you go on your defenses but the rest of the tweet is actually very interesting yeah and they had like all these photos of what the actual tawais looks like uh wh- how they dressed 
um, and they were talking about you know like there's a scene in uh, the series where uh, one of the like an Englishman called Gunther for some reason <laughs> yeah. comes to uh, uh, comes comes to Manisha's character and shows her the gramophone and this is in the 1940s when like the gramophone was like like people already knew what a gramophone was like we had movies in the 1940s like it's is this not... 40s is this 20s i'm not 100% sure so the the first part like rehana and uh, malika jan's youth that is the 1920s i believe and then the the last part is in the 1940s is like flight before independence basically oh then it may, like i thought it was the 20s so i was like okay i'll forgive that there's like no mention of pakistan or any anything mm-hmm. like that but if it's mm-hmm. the 40s like yeah. i don't know i mean the and, name didn't exist but, but there but was like def- the, but the entire like politics of this thing is like really weird because you you're supposed to be following you know like the other uh character at the center of the story is aditi rao hydri's character uh who is supposed to be very politically you know like minded she's like she says that you know like i i don't want to be a bazar wali i want to be a mulk wali and like i want to fight for my country blah 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 but they don't mention who's doing the fighting they just say like bagi like do the like the bagis had like actual names at that point you know you had the congress you had you know the muslim league you had like you know like they were actually people in lahore who like the people that they're talking about and like they're showing on screen they belong to like proper like parties with names they weren't just like a concerned citizen society that just sort of met in bookstores and were like we're going to go blow things up like that's not how it happened they were like yeah. communists you know like yeah. there was a huge communist movement in lahore at that time um and they don't mention any of those things which is like a really weird choice and i wonder if it's because of the current political climate in india and you know like netflix being like hey we can't mention the people <laughs> who were blowing things up in lahore at the time yeah I, um, i think that's part of it that's true and second slb is just not interested in it like, that's also there yeah i think it's both of these things together right so and it's, it's, it's sad just, because yeah. like you know like the actual story of hira like the few times that slb allows his characters to be human like you know when like Rita Chadda's character's insanity yeah. or uh you can see like what uh Sanjeeda Sheikh's character you know like the the way she's been warped by her uh, by her experiences and her family and the way that she treats her daughter for example like you know it's just like it's so interesting and there's so many different things that you could explore about these women and like their interior lives um and they just sort of like throw everything out the window just so that they can show them posing very prettily against like wallpaper yeah and then at, and then you come to the last episode and you're just like what just happened oh my god that last episode but I, like before we get into the last episode i do want to say a few things that i did like about the show mm-hmm. um i I was worried that Sanjay Leela Bansali because he's so much like such a theatrical filmmaker that he wouldn't be able to translate that to a bingeable eight episode show. And I think until the first four episodes I was actually really amazed by how well he did it and how every episode really uh, ended with like a mic drop moment. You know like when uh, when um when you figure out that Bibo Jaan is a revolutionary is like wow you didn't see that coming then sonakshi sinha comes back you didn't see that coming you know then also i love the fact that sonakshi sinha is just snatching everybody's shit is <laughs> like oh i like that ring snatch i like the chip snatch you know <laughs> love that so all of those moments are really good and then lajjo's performance and then her death all of these moments were mic drop moments and then as soon as the focus starts shifting on the love story it doesn't work for me anymore but back to the positives i think sunakshi is amazing in this like mm-hmm. what like after the har like i don't know, like you know i like sunakshi i've liked her for a long time i'm just so happy that she's finding roles that work for her and she seems to be reveling in these roles and the kind of the way she's presented i thought she was really amazing expressions dancing looks 
uh, even elocution, right? I think she does a really good job with the Urdu and the pronunciation and stuff like that. I thought Sha- she was amazing. I thought um, uh, Richa Chadda was amazing, even if it was a very small role. I also think she had the best song for all of the songs that there were. I like. I just love the trope of you know loudly singing a song in a party where only two people know what the song is about, you know, and you're just like guilting people. And Richa does that, which I thought was really cool. Um, I also liked a lot of the supporting actresses. I liked the actress that was playing Saima. Uh, she was mm-hmm. really good. Um, she, um, I liked Imad, uh, sorry, the, uh, Shama, I think the, I think it's the actress that's also playing in Lapata Ladies. Um, yeah. Sharmin yeah, Segal's, yeah, yeah. uh, Sharmin Segal, uh, so not Sharmin Segal. No, no, no. Uh, what's her name? The scar, the, the one with the scar. Uh, Sanjeeva Sheikh. She is amazing. She is amazing. amazing. So one of the best in there. I thought Farida Jalal was really good. Uh, I liked it is very pretty, but I think the thing with pretty, you know that coming in. You know, it's like Rohit Shetty is going to flip a Jeep. It's going to be pretty when um, when uh, Sanjali Labansali is going to be directing it. And my wife was watching it after I was watching it. And she was like, always like, uh, oh, is this going to end well for these people? And I was like, it's a Sanjali Labansali show. It's not going to end well for anybody here, right? Uh, including us as the viewers. Yeah, including the audience, right? I thought... Uh, <laughs> I thought uh, 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 Manisha Kurala was also good. I think the uh, the character is written so badly. It's so underdeveloped and like haphazardly written that I could never really understand what Malika Jan was about. Like she's... So it makes sense to me that it was originally written for Rekha because this is the kind of role, like underwritten role, that Rekha yeah. could come in and absolutely save. You know, yeah. it's like that thing that you were saying about like uh, how certain actors like Salman and Shah Rukh and Madhuri and you know, like they know how to like make it work for them. Yeah. This is what it required. And I, I know it's controversial because like everybody's like, oh my God, Manisha, she's like such a wonderful actor. And like back to the 90s, you know, like everyone's been talking about like how Manisha is like an amazing actor. And I genuinely don't feel that way about Manisha, which I think like I've spoken about before. Yeah. And this is why like she can't elevate stuff yeah you know yeah um but i i think that's kind of the best part of it and then the the bad parts is also just how underdeveloped so much is and like even like hira mandi itself the power dynamics all of that it also only focuses on these two kotas next to each other and is Sun actually even making a quota? I don't know what she's like actually doing there, right? Like she's just she's like, like throwing awesome parties. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But there's like this whole thing. Oh, there she's allowing white people in it, and apparently also she was allow- allowing prostitution in it. I think that was like a very quick thing they mentioned, but they never talk about that. And then it's all about Malika Jan being the top queen, but then there's also a committee of tawi- tawives, and she's not top queen. All of these things. What I also liked is they hinted in the first episode and then they forgot about, forget about it is this debauchery of the nawabs right their mm-hmm. mindset like how corrupt they were but then it just forgets about all of that even like they become just like classic evil collaborators but like for uh uh Ferdin khan's character he just disappears for six episodes I was like, wait, he is he the top Nawab or he's not the top Nawab? Not that I'm saying I need more of Fardeen. Apparently, just, all the Nawabs are top Nawabs because they all get to like collaborate yeah. with the British. Yeah, and there's like five of them. So how is Hira Mandi working on five Nawabs? That's that's the whole economy of Hira Mandi. And all of that, like because there's mic drop moments, performances are good, it's kind of propulsive, you kind of forget about that. But then you hit episode 8 and all of these problems come, you know, to the surface for me. And that's where I was like, oh, crap, he's gone back to Sanjay Leela Bansali things, which I don't like. I don't like, I didn't like that the ending became like a sing-song in a terrible song. It didn't even like motivate me about independence or fire. I hate it that uh, Aditi Rao Hadri dies exactly the same way Deepika dies in yes. uh, Baji Rao Mastani. Yes. I hated that all of these women are coming to the fort exactly like Padmavat, um, you know, and then it ends like with a voiceover. 
oh, they, these women struggled and there are more struggles. It ends like Bade Mia, Chote Mia. Like, it's insane. Like, what are we doing here? Like, it's just basically he ran out of money or out of interest. And he's like, like pack up. Ho gaya baut. Like, let's go. I don't, I, yeah. It, it really annoyed the crap out of me, that last episode. It just like all of the goodwill, all of the excitement I had for the first six, seven episodes of the show. Um just vanished completely and i was like wow. also because like in the last episode uh i mean we've spent like seven episodes following not seven but like like what five episodes following the tussle between malika jan yeah. and uh faridan and you know like at the end of it malika jan is like oh like the uh, my kids don't really care for this so here you can have it all and then faridan is like <sighs> No, but I'll fight for you. Like you know, bye. Yeah, it happens so quickly. But it, I mean, the the and that's another thing that we not need to talk about the the casual brutality of the sexual assault scenes in this mm-hmm. in this show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because there's two. A there's the one with uh, Manisha Korala, which is really horrific when you think about it. Uh, and then there's the one that Saima has to go through because she's gotten sold. Um, but it's it, like the the Manisha Koirala sequence is kind of that one really bugged me because a it's it's very gratuitous in a way. Mm-hmm. But secondly, it's also the way it advances the story plot is that oh um, that is the turnaround for Sonakshi. Like oh I never wanted this to happen to her, and now I'm. Like now I'm on, on her side. And then Malika is like, oh, because this happened to me, now I'm a good person. In a way, it feels like, you know, like, isko do maarenge, seedhi jayegi. right? And that just kind of bugs me, that thought of, you know, oh, we just have something horrible happen to you and then you're going to be a good person. You know, it's like corporal punishment to kids or something like that. And there's no, again, there's no insight. There's no evolution in terms of, you know, like it changing her mindset towards the British or not the British. Um, yeah, it's it's all very And it's also unexplored. really weird that that's how that entire assault thing, like Manisha's in particular, works out because both Faridan and uh, Malika Jan are, you know, like they're from that world from Hira Mandi. Yeah. You know, and there's like they, this entire thing, song and dance about like how Sanjeeda Sheikh's character's face got like, you know, um, cut by like one of her customers or whatever. You can't tell me that the, that was like the first time that, you know, Malika Jan was assaulted or that, like, what is that? Yeah, exactly. She's like, Sunakshi Sinha's character has been sold as a nine-year-old girl. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mal- Malika Jan has had a life of prostitution where she's sent other women to this kind of thing. She's literally done this to Saima like three episodes ago. So I don't know. Like it's just it's very unexplored. I don't understand why this was suddenly the switch for her when she's had it happen before. She's had it done to other people, and so I don't know. I don't know like what they were trying to like. They do talk about the physical pain of it. Which was probably Manisha's best scene. I thought that visually, where she's sitting under that fountain, all in black, it felt very like Pieta style, right? Like that kind of like Ma- Mary and th- that kind of visuals. Um, th- I, I, that was probably the best scene for me for, of her. But it's just like dialogue, Bazi. It doesn't have any real pathos or pain attached to it like i don't know it just felt very very weird i also felt very weird how saima's character just this horrible thing has happened to us and we never see or hear from her again except like you know the the lp that they find of her it's all these really really weird things like on a one hand he's like supposed to be you know a a very woman-centric director about women's stories but when it's time to actually explore these stories he chooses to focus on only visuals. And that's every time what he does. Well, that's really what Hindi film means when they say that something is women-centric. They just mean that she has like a lot of screen time. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that they're doing something for women or that yeah. they're actually concerned about the issues that women face. Um, but it's really weird to me because with Hiramandi, it's literally set in 
the world of like sex work so mm. it's not like you have to dig very deep to find like you know the the stories with all the pathos in it like is right there yeah you can just like think about like faridan story you know like a child who sees her mother you know like hanging and then is like sold off by yeah. her aunt and then like has that whole revenge art like you don't have to go like a you know like you don't have to like have like manisha's assault be her driving force like yeah. there's so many other ways to have approached it yeah so yeah this is really weird yeah Uh, it's a it's a shame. I thought this like literally first few episodes when I was texting you guys, I thought this might be the thing that you know gets them the international hit that they want, and it could be. I think we Netflix a lot of is definitely like giving it the big push. Uh, yeah, like he like Ted Sarandos uh, flew out SLB and uh, also Shaman Sagal, I guess. Um, and they were having like this huge party with like Bill Hader and Ali Wong and. you know like netflix is like doing all that stuff but i don't know man i don't know cuz we were talking you wanted to talk about that when we were talking about the kapil sharma show right that they've spent a ton of money on this right uh, yeah. just their tragedy uh, strategy as a whole that i i haven't been able to figure out since ages what netflix india actually wants to do um it just seems like all over the place uh I think Prime has a stronger strategy than Netflix even has, you know. So um the thing is I think it might hit people differently because they're not aware of so many Hindi film tropes or they've not seen they're not that dealt. And I think his his stuff does travel, you know. People that don't know they do get like oh the visuals are so great and this is what bollywood is supposed to be and they get engrossed with that kind of thing he he did the same thing with devdas too right where it was like a big thing in france when i was living there like devdas and stuff like that but i don't know i don't know it didn't work for me at least i was i was like i was like from after gangubai i was like wow well, man he's got like he's he's making things that i like again um you know he's kind of found his groove again and uh, for the so, first seven yeah. episodes F S L V said psych. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, for uh, the BBC. I'm we're doing um, this '90s playlist that actually is going to be out when this episode drops. So you can actually go to the BBC Asian Network website and vote for the ultimate '90s playlist. Uh, song, the best songs of the '90s, and I'm one of the panels, and I'm also going to be one of the judges. So I'm going to be on BBC if you want to listen to me when that episode happens, and. because of that i was kind of listening to older 90 songs and i went to back to bahon ke darmiya which is all i want from slb right like it, that song is so hot it's so sexy and they're both completely clothed like there's no pecs no nothing right and that's when salman was like i'm not taking off my shirt man i'm, I'm doing what i'm doing you know like and that worked you know and uh, it's a shame like I, i just don't want any chandeliers anymore i don't want any 70000 lights anymore i don't want the same dresses can he come back to like normal times i don't know like is he even capable do you think i don't think so yeah yeah it's a shame it's a shame i mean some people like it like i mean how how has the critical reception been have you been following a few cuz i was so done with yeah. it i didn't even watch too many reviews and stuff like that with it i don't think the reviews have been particularly kind but uh i do want to give a shout out to our friend uday um who <laughs> uday bhatia yes uday bhatia who uh, wrote a review and called uh, tajdar tajdar a naram <laughs> 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 excellent pun excellent yeah. pun uh but apart from that I, i haven't actually been following like i don't i don't know like the only reason we are actually like spending this much time talking about the series i think is because we had screeners and therefore like you know like we were just like hey like we didn't watch it so let's like yeah. talk about it but yeah. genuinely speaking like if i didn't have this show i probably might not even have watched hira mandi hmm or maybe i would have watched like the first episode and then like pieced out speaking of tajdar do you think he's the breakout of the show do you think he's got he's going to be able to kind of catapult himself to success with this i don't think so hmm like he doesn't like for a 
for a guy to do that like you know he needs to be like you need to have that edge you know like yeah. that sex appeal edge which i don't think he does like he's a very pretty boy but that's about as far as it goes yeah cuz I, i was thinking of um uh, uh siddhant gupta in um, yeah. jubilee you know that you could feel like this is a star yeah. if he gets the right projects which he seems yeah. to not be getting unfortunately no, uh, i had the exact same yeah. uh, feeling like that was the exact same reference that i had he's actually like you haven't seen madgaon express but he is so good in it uh-huh. and that is like a like you know like a like a proper male lead like mm. bollywood male lead role Uh, oh, nice. And it's a shame that more people haven't watched that film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he was in that, but I didn't yeah. know Nora Fateh was in it. So yeah, <laughs> he and Nora Fateh are so good in it. Like they're yeah. like so cute together. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny. I think like if we speak about this kind of, I think Jubilee was so much so better than this compared to what. Hira Mandi has done right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, Jubilee did this much better. I think uh, again another show with Aditi Rao Hedri. Uh, by the way, she looks amazing in this Aditi Rao Hedri. She always does. Yeah. But like, especially her first song, like oh my god, really good. She's lovely. I guess that's it um, for this episode. Uh, Amrita, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at Amrita IQ. I'm at Asim Bernie. Drop us an email. Drop us an email. I mean, actually, we should maybe read some comments. Should we? Read? Oh crap! I should have maybe folded this in more organically. I'll read it next time. Send us some emails or Hira Mandi. What did you think? And I'll also read some from Patreon because we got a lot of uh, emails there too. Because uh, I'm keen to hear what people think. Uh, and send us points that we haven't made. I mean, I get it. Alam Zeb nepotism. Alam Zeb Urdu. That I part I get. If you have something new to add, send us, and then we can discuss it on the next episode. Uh, cool. That's it for this episode, and uh, yeah, talk to you guys later. Yeah.